People who make their living out of cleaning murder scenes, accidents, and the like. What is the worst thing you have experienced in your career? Not safe for work, posted one day ago. Dad had to saran wrap a guy's intestines back into his body once. Dude had surgery and pushed too hard in the toilet. Dude was fine, according to Dad, just holding himself together on the toilet while the group of firefighters tried to figure out why the F they were sent instead of paramedics. Update. When he pushed too hard, he opened a scar on his torso slash ab area and it all fell out onto his lap. Should have mentioned this when I wrote the post. One that stuck with me was a suicide in a bathtub. We couldn't drain the tub, so had to use a coagulant then scoop up the bloody mess into biohazard bags. Same for the toilet. Another was a suicide by gun in a basement full of boxes, which was a nightmare to clean, as even the smallest bit of flesh had to be found and cleaned up. The smell of the smallest piece of flesh meant the job wasn't done until it was found. One scene. The cops thought it would be helpful to put newspaper on top of the leftover melted body oils when dried to the floors and was terrible to clean up. Sad cleaning up these things when family is in the other room as well. Not working the job anymore, but definitely gave me an appreciation for the hard work biohazard cleanup crews do, mostly on call as well, so you never know how long you'll be away from home. Obligatory, not a cleanup pro, but working at a county animal shelter meant we got the roadkill remains. We were required to hold them in our facility's body freezer for a certain number of days in case someone came in looking for a pet matching the description. This, of course, meant you had to try and come up with identifying information from whatever was left of the animal. Sometimes it was easy. They were just a bit bloodied or twisted, but other times you had to double glove, put on the apron, and start folding the bits around to try to tell what color it used to be. The worst part was when someone came in looking for a pet that matched a DOA description. Whoever happened to answer the call from the front desk had to go get it out of the freezer and try to arrange it in such a way that the person could come identify it without passing out or vomiting. We were legit trained to handle if someone passed out or puked. Luckily, it never happened to me, but we had a chair and a stretcher just in case. The hardest part was when people tried to act all tough like it was no big deal, but then absolutely melting down. One in particular really haunts me. Pretty typical case of cat versus car, leg and rib bones sticking out, so much blood we had to towel it down to check for markings, eyeballs hanging out and one of them is deflated and shriveled, guts hanging out of the anus, just a mess. Lo and behold, the poor thing had a collar and microchip. I ended up being the one to respond when the owner arrived and they explained the situation. Big muscly dude, wearing a Marine Corps t-shirt, tats up and down his arms. He's shaking like a leaf and trying to hide it when I come up to get him and take him back. I had this spiel I used to give about how we do this just to be sure, and sometimes it's hard to see animals like this and just let me know if he needs to step out for a second. He tells me point blank that he's a veteran, he's seen guys get shot, he can handle it. We go into the room where I have the half-frozen cat corpse under a towel, the bloody collar on top of it. He picks up the collar without a word and I can see in his eyes that he knows. I ask if he wants to head back up front now and he says he has to be sure. So I pulled the towel back carefully to expose just the top half, but the poor thing was in bad shape. The good side is facing up, but its jaw is still shattered and hanging funny. The one eye is bulging out and filled with blood like a demented snow globe. Half the tongue is missing. There's a clear depression on the chest from the tires. One leg is twisted around like a dang twizzler. The guy just stares. After a few seconds, he just turns for the door, stops halfway there, looks back, takes a knee like someone hit him in the gut. All he says is, I saw my guys get shot. Why a cat? It's just a cat, man. It's just a cat. The whole time he's clutching the bloody collar to his chest. It turned out, per the girls up front who had talked to him at first, that it was the cat his therapist had recommended to get for his PTSD. Her name had been Hope. I posted this on another thread, so just copy and pasted it, but this one that I had to do. Clean up after a murder. It was a rehab house for ex-cons, four-bedroom house with communal bathroom and kitchen. Sunday morning, and guy A is in his room listening to music pretty loud. Guy B is in the kitchen cooking his breakfast. B knocks on A's door and tells him to turn it down. There's a small argument, and B returns to his breakfast, and A turns his music up. So B grabs the biggest knife in the kitchen, kicks in A's door, and stabs him through the left shoulder, entering by his collarbone. A runs out of his room, across the landing down the stairs, out the front door, back inside, back up the stairs, and collapses on the landing. When I got there, it was like a scene from a movie. 
Walls and ceilings everywhere A had been were caked with blood. Apparently, after B stabbed him, he returned to cooking his breakfast. There was a half-eaten breakfast in the kitchen when I got there. Not a cleaner, but my brother's best friend is a police officer and I heard all about this horrible experience. My brother's friend took him on ride-alongs all the time. One day, they were responding to a welfare check. This guy's neighbor saw his apartment door cracked open for several days and called the police. They went to check it out and found a college student, 18 to 19, who had shot himself. The most disturbing part to my brother was that the kid had all of his belongings boxed up and labeled. He had letters written out and labeled for who they were supposed to go to, and he even went as far as laying out a tarp and then putting heavy blankets over himself before he shot himself, as a courtesy to the people that would have to clean his remains. This wasn't a spur-of-the-moment decision, this was a very well-thought-out suicide, and the guy was obviously thinking about everyone who would have to deal with it too. So sad to imagine such a thoughtful person in so much pain that he meticulously orchestrated his suicide. My brother said the scene was messed him up. Not because of the gore, but the lack thereof. Because this guy so meticulously and thoughtfully offed himself. I worked for a restoration company, rarely cleaned up after dead bodies, and I got the only one during my tenure at the company. The lady had passed probably two weeks before anyone did a wellness check, so the entire room was contaminated. By the time I got there to do the cleaning, there were so many dead flies and maggots on the floor, it was truly shocking. We rolled the carpet and carpet pad up that was in the room, and all of the dead bugs sounded like a rain stick you get in a cheap tourist shop. That sound sticks with me after three years. I work in the ER. I was told by someone that works for a funeral home that they had to go get a girl that had overdosed and passed away. They said she had her breasts augmented and was pregnant. Turns out she overdosed while taking a bath and had decomposed enough that her breast implants and the fetus were floating around in the water. Then I clocked out and had lunch. I had a great uncle who helped clean up the bodies left behind Hurricane Audrey in 1957 and he said that the smell persisted in his nose for weeks after. It got so bad that he went to the doctor to see if they could do anything and they clipped all of his nose hairs and the smell went away. It was explained to him that the smell had soaked into the hair but I don't claim to know the validity of that statement. The hurricane hit South Louisiana in June of that year and most of the bodies recovered were found in the salt water marshes that cover the area so it's safe to assume that they were in an advanced state of decay. I've heard it said that the smell of the decomposing bodies was so bad that the alligators would actively avoid the areas, but I don't know the validity of that either. Not me, but my mother was a firefighter EMT for a long time. She always told me some crazy stories. There are two that have always stuck with me. The first, two men whose families didn't accept their relationship and it weighed on them so badly that they decided to take their own lives. They attempted this by getting in a tub, taking some drugs, and then using a power saw to saw off each other's arms and bleed out. The direction they cut, however, didn't make them bleed out as they had wished, and then they were left with one arm uncut and no arm to cut it. My mother told me it was such a bizarre scene to walk in on that she still doesn't believe it was real. The second, they responded to a death a few days after a man had died in his hot tub, multiple days in the extremely hot water, when my mother and her partner went to pull him out, he had basically boiled alive and all the meat on his body just slid off the bone. I'm not a crime scene cleaner, but we used to transport coroner cases as part of our job. The elderly man who blew his head off with a shotgun in a third story attic in the summer was rough. He'd been there a few weeks. We could smell him when we got out of the truck at the street. Blood spatter covered every inch of the walls in that room, as did the flies had to scrape some dried brain off the floor into a container for the coroner. When I went to roll him into a body bag, his bloated, slimy, greenish-blue skin slipped off of him, and I was left holding a large sheet of it with both hands. The worst part was his wife had passed a few weeks before. They had been one of those married for 60 years, inseparable couples. He just couldn't take it. That broke my heart. Other guys were puking. I cried silently working for a tow truck driver that gets the call after crashes. The worst one for me was a family of six coming back with over 10 pizzas for a baseball team. It was a head-on with a tractor-trailer, 18-wheeler. The ambulance took the bodies away, of course. Everyone died but one little guy. There was so much blood and vomit, diapers, toy dolls covered in blood. The pizza was everywhere inside the car, like two inches thick on everything and all over the road. 
There were so many backpacks and things just covered in pizza and blood. It is hard to even describe it to this day. It was oozing out all over the road and was like an exploded pizza pocket. Everyone that was waiting in the traffic jam looked horrified. I spent some time with the coroner to shadow for school. They were showing me different cases and going over them pictures included. The one that seemed to emotionally bother this particular guy the most was a scene where a father was coming home and pulling into the driveway. His daughter, three years old, was running to greet him and he didn't see her and ended up running over her head. The pictures were heartbreaking enough. I can't imagine what that dad went through when he saw her like that. There was another one that had three bodies. Some guy killed his wife, his affair partner, and her daughter, put them in a shed in the middle of summer, and left town. They were found three weeks later, basically piles of putrid slime, maggots like filled 10-gallon buckets full, and bloated body parts slogging off as they tried to bag them. The murderer had a pilot's license and has never been caught. The decomp room smelled for months after that. Not me personally, but my dad used to be an EMT firefighter. In the late 80s, he got a call about a horrid smell coming from the neighbor's house of the person calling, it knowing what it was EMT, firefighter, and police were dispatched. They found the house was owned by a single old lady who died in her living room chair. Not too bad, right? Wrong. The chair was an old leather recliner, and as she was decomposing, she melted and fused with the leather chair. When the EMTs got there, they had to remove her from the house and when they tried to pull her off her back skin, arms, and lower body separated from the rest of her body, and then remained attached to the chair, decomposing flesh, blood and organs fell out and all over the chair and floor. People were vomiting every 10 seconds and couldn't stand to be inside longer than a few minutes. My dad described the smell and scene as the worst thing he has ever seen. Her body was so decomposed, she was basically a liquid inside with a fragile shell. He had to leave and grab a full respirator from the fire truck, and even then it didn't do jack shit. The others took turns going in to retrieve the pieces so they can be disposed of. When they were finished, they burned the chair in the front yard. I'm a first responder. A few days ago I had a bad one. Not the worst or the grossest, but it was rough. I had a wellness check in an at-risk community apartment building. There was a younger lady, terminally ill, living on her own. Her son was calling for our help in getting in contact with her. I spoke with security, and they had a key to her place. I made entry into a dark apartment. I was navigating by flashlight. I wasn't expecting to find anyone because her neighbors told me she was in the hospital. The bathroom was covered in bodily fluids that had solidified. I found more dried human waste on the floor leading to the bedroom. I found the female on the floor in the kitchen, sitting up in the dark with my flashlight. Honestly, it was something out of a horror film. I felt so horrible for her, dying alone in her pajamas so ill. Her head was slumped down with fluids that had dripped out of her and solidified, almost frozen like icicles. She had been dead for a few days. That image of seeing her has just stuck with me. The loneliness of the deceased's situation is what is so horrible to me. No one deserves to die like that. Thanks for letting me vent. Not exactly what you ask, but my husband's uncle worked as a paramedic firefighter for many years. The accident that disturbed him the most, mourning, involves children was getting a call about three boys locked in the trunk of a car. From what I can remember, the kids were playing around outside during the summer and got into an old non-running car out on someone's property. He had to pry the trunk open, and unfortunately all three had passed. He said that day took a lot out of him, and he still can't get the images out of his head. I work in disaster cleanup, including biohazard scenes. Sadly, it's only gotten worse since the Rona. Suicides have spiked, murder is up, old folks dying at home alone and people not realizing for longer because they don't want to give grandma and grandpa the virus. You would think they'd still pick up the phone and call. They are all awful. From the man who murdered his mom with a weight, to the man who shot himself in the head, then walked all around the house bleeding everywhere, to the man who shot himself and we had to scrub blood off the baby bassinet, to the old man who died in a senior independent living facility who had no furniture and just a sleeping bag on the ground with garbage and fecal stains everywhere. He wasn't found for some time. That one really bothered me a lot. Seeing someone who lived in those conditions and no one knew or maybe didn't care or they didn't realize he was gone until the odor got too bad. 